Section 1.12 is about virtualization fundamentals. What is server virtualization? Server virtualization is the process of using software to divide one physical server into multiple virtual machines that act like individual physical devices. The key components of virtualization are hypervisor, which is a hardware, software, or firmware capable of creating virtual machines and then managing and allocating resources to them. For example, you could create a virtual machine running Linux and then use a hypervisor to manage its resources, allocating it 2 gig of RAM. There are two types of hypervisor, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is a bare metal hypervisor and is installed directly on the hardware of your machine. Bare metal hypervisors are typically faster and more efficient because they have direct access to the underlying hardware and don't need to go through the operating system later. Since they don't have to compete with other applications or the operating system, they can take all the available physical hardware power and allocate it to virtual machines. Whereas the Type 2 or hosted hypervisor is installed on your operating system. Hosted hypervisors are significantly easier to set up and get running as you can use the more user-friendly operating system. They are often used for testing and development purposes as they run on the operating system to try out new programs or features without affecting the host operating system. Some other components is the virtual machine. This is a fully independent operating system instance running on virtualized hardware. Then we have the host machine, which is the physical server running the hypervisor. And the guest machine, which is the individual virtual machine running inside the hypervisor. There's a lot of benefits in using virtualization. One is efficient use of hardware. It's also easy to backup and recover. And also scalability and cost savings. A real world example is a company runs a Windows server, a Linux based web server, and a firewall, all on the same physical server using VMware ESXi. Here is an exam tip. Be able to identify hypervisor types and understand how virtualization reduces hardware needs. Next topic is the container. Containers are a lightweight virtualization method that allows apps to run in isolated environments using the same operating system kernel. Everything the app needs to run is bundled inside the container, like the code, libraries, dependencies, and configurations. Containers share the host operating system's kernel, but each one runs in its own isolated user space. Unlike virtual machines, they don't boot up a full operating system, just what's needed for the app. Containers start very quickly and use less resources than virtual machines. Unlike virtual machines, they don't boot up a full operating system, just what's needed. And here are some popular container tools. The first one is Docker and this is one of the most common container platform. A Docker container packages up an application and all its dependencies into a self-contained, portable environment, allowing it to run consistently across different systems. Docker containers are used to package and run a wide variety of applications, including web apps, databases, media servers, and more. Another container tool is Kubernetes. This is used for managing many container or orchestration. Kubernetes is a container orchestration platform that manages these containers, automating their deployment, scaling, and management across a cluster of machines. 
Example of applications commonly deployed on Kubernetes are web application, databases, and microservices. And here is a comparison of the differences between container and virtual machine. Let's start with virtual machines. Virtual machines has full isolation level, which means each has its own operating system. They are also heavier on resources. The full operating system uses more resources. Virtual machines are less portable due to operating system dependencies such as hypervisor, virtual hardware, and other software packages. Whereas a container's isolation is process level, which shares with the operating system's kernel. Containers are also lighter on the resources, which means it uses less RAM and CPU. They also have very fast boot time in seconds. And they are highly portable across environments because everything the app needs is bundled inside a container. Here's an example use case of a container. A web developer builds an app using Node.js and packages it with Nginx in a container. Here's an exam tip. Know that containers are faster and lighter than virtual machines, and that they are excellent for app deployment and DevOps pipelines. And last in this section is VRF or virtual routing and forwarding. VRF is a layer 3 virtualization feature on routers that allows multiple separate routing tables to coexist on the same physical router. Each VRF instance operates like a logical router, completely isolated from other VRFs, even on the same physical device. Here's an example scenario. You have two internet connections, one for guest users and one for corporate users. Each has its own path to the internet despite the fact that common hardware is in use. VRFs allows them to segment each user's traffic and route securely without interference. Even though they use the same subnet, they are isolated due to VRFs. And here is a command that shows the routing table associated with a specific VRF. And this is what a VRF routing table looks like. Here's an exam tip. VRF is for multiple virtual routers on one physical device. Watch out for isolation and overlapping IPs in the questions. Software that allows multiple virtual machines to run on a single physical host by managing and allocating hardware resources. The two types of hypervisors. Virtualizes the operating system instead of hardware, allowing multiple isolated applications to run using the same operating system kernel. Allows multiple separate routing tables to exist on the same router enabling isolated networks.